Hello everyone, welcome to the Model Frontier. We're here with another special video where the Agora models build the RMS Titanic. If you're new to the channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss a second of any of my great gaming or model building content. So, we're here with another special for your Titanic build. We're going to look at a few, we're going to take an in-depth look at a few different things that you might consider doing with your build. We're going to take a look at, we're going to take a detailed look at two different methods for adding lights to your boat deck. We're going to examine light blocking in a more generalized and complete sense. We're also going to take an in-depth look at what you can do to make your lifeboats that are going to be prominently featured on your boat deck really pop. So we got a lot to cover, so without further ado, let's go back to Titanic. So in this special video, we're going to take a moment and talk about doing some lighting. Uh, we briefly touched on it in our when we built the bridge, we touched on doing some lighting, but that was replacing two lights with existing wires. In this video, we're going to look at how to add lights to the ship. You may remember, working on, when we were working on this, we drilled out a bunch of holes uh, on, along the deck, and I told you we're going to add lighting to it. Uh, that is what we're going to do which will turn it from just being a bunch of empty holes if we... I've already done one side of this so this is how I'm going to show you so it'll turn it from being a bunch of empty holes to actually having some lights shining on our deck now how do we do this? that's the folk. that's going to be the focus of this video uh, here today So if you take a look underneath here, you can see, and I'll point it out to you, what we've done is we're using the same micro LEDs we used for our bridge, and we're running and connecting them to the circuit board that we already have here. Now, this is important because when we get our, when we get our um, model all hooked up, there's going to be a remote control to turn on all the lights which you want to make sure you can use. You don't want to be you don't want to not be able to use that uh, to turn on all your lights at once. You don't want to have stray lights. So, it's going to be important to make sure we're connecting these to all to our boards, to our existing lighting boards. Um, it's important to also note which one is a positive and a negative on these. Um, I'm using the ones that go out to the lights on to, that go out to these lights here. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because they offer the widest range of space to put the lights on. Um, so your job is to make sure you are marking, you're taking note of which light, which side is which. When it's facing up, um, so if I'm looking at this one here where it's facing up, the left side the left side is a positive pole and the right side is a negative pole. Um, it's also important that you don't that you make sure when we're setting these up we don't cross those because it will cause all the lights on this string on this board to turn off. So we don't want to do that. So a key component is planning. You want to be able to plan where your lights are going to run. This is going to be crucial because later on when we're running lights all over the place, we're going to have to make sure we put those in the right position. So my goal is to try to make it run as short, using as short a lead as possible and keeping it as taut as possible so that there's not as much give to show through the windows later. So just like with the bridge, um, we're using these little micro LEDs um, again red is positive black is negative always you're also gonna need your soldering iron 
just like we did use before. And you're going to need to make sure you have all the tools you need to do this. So now we're going to start work on the other side. So the first thing you're going to want to do So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start at this front hole here, and we're going to feed our light in like so. We're going to feed our lines in. Now this light I've already cut short, so I'm going to show you, so I'm going to, you know, show you that real quick here. You can see I've already kind of cut this down because I was trying to use it on another one and it didn't exactly work out right. So, okay. So now we got our light in there, and I'm going to bring my camera up so I can show you this. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to want our... We're going to want our eyes, and we're going to want our soldering iron here. Some more light over here. Okay, now step one is we're going to connect the positive to the positive. And if you've got enough solder on your in there already, you can do this pretty easily. I find that one of the best things you can do. Uh, just to make sure you're not screwing anything else up is to keep these plugged in because then you can actually see the lights that you've already installed and make sure that nothing's you know not working so now we're going to take this lead here since it's already cut I'm going to take it try to connect it down. I might want to put a little more solder on there. So if you need to put a little more solder on your part, I, uh, whoops! See what happens if we're not careful? We lose lights. thing with these is they get really hot really fast. So now we got the positive in. We can test to see if everything's working. Connect the negative now you can see it lighting up so we got the positive hooked up good now we got the now we got to hook up the negative side which we will do right on here so now when you have a full wire how do you get that because obviously we're not gonna put it on where we're going to have it a ton of this wire showing. So how do we do this? Well, 
because these wires are so thin, obviously stripping them is not uh, an easy an easy task. So what we do, the best way I found to strip them is just like what Model Boat Guy does. We take our soldering iron, and we're just going to kind of melt the plastic here. Just want to melt enough to get the wire exposed. Um, it's going to be tricky to show you on here, but if when you see silver, when you see the metal of the wire, of the inside of the wire, uh, you know you've got it exposed enough to do this part. So now we're going to grab our tweezers here. come in with my glasses and we're going to connect it to the negative side here. So, trying to do this while getting around the camera is tough, but... Give it a light tug to make sure it's all good, and if it is, we got a light. You can see it lit up. Don't worry about the color. We'll do. I'll show you how to do that because I accidentally bought the wrong colors. So I'll tell you how we deal with that in a bit to make the lights look right. But that is really all there is to it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and so that's all there really is to it. You just gotta know where your positive and your negative sides are. Um, make sure they don't interlink make sure you don't cross them uh, make sure you're very careful because your soldering iron obviously is going to get very hot it can melt plastic really quickly so be very careful with what you touch to it a uh, couple key things is you know how you got the one wire that goes to the to the funnel uh, you don't you want to make sure you get that out of the way and get any Stray wires out of the way too because you don't want to melt you know your stuff on this you don't want to melt anything on it um, but that's pretty much all there is to it just make sure you connect your positive to your negative terminals um, you can always test it out with your battery box and at the end of the day when you're done uh, you will have all the lights put in and after that um, I find one of the best things to do to help keep the lights in place is to just put a little dab of super glue on them. And if you need to yellow them to make them a little off yellow, you can always just dab them with a little bit of paint and they'll make them more yellow to match the rest of the interior lights and to match uh, what the lights of 1912 would have looked like. Uh, for more information on things you could try to do to help with your lighting, you might want to check out Model Boat Guy. Um, he's really an amazing um he's really an amazing um you know he's got a couple of good videos about this so it might be beneficial to look at and i'm gonna go wire the rest of this up so that we can have lights and i'll show you what it looks like at the end and here's a look at all the lights in action um at least for the front section you will do the same thing for the back section where the gymnasium and the grand staircase is and they'll light up too. Now if that's too much for you, there is an easier method that you might consider. Now if soldering and rewiring micro LEDs is something you're not 100% comfortable with, there's an alternate method we can use 
to do lighting and that's going to involve the use of fiber cable. Now what is fiber optic cable? Well simply put it's a clear it's a thin clear tube. Um, there may not seem to be anything special about this particular tube but the thing with these fiber optic cables is if you run a light through it, the tips light up. See? The tips light up as you put light to it. Now, this is beneficial in a couple of ways. Number one, these don't use any power, so you're not going to be putting a strain on your batteries or on your power source the way you would if you solder them together. The other thing is, unlike micro LEDs, which will get quite expensive with a model this size, these this is relatively pretty cheap. You can get hundreds and hundreds of feet of it for you know very little money. Uh, this is the one millimeter uh, thick piece. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to be showing you using this piece from the from pack 10 which is coming up on the channel soon um first of all i drilled out all my holes they're one millimeter holes on there and then if we look on the bottom here you basically would run your fiber optic cable uh from your in through your hole and to your to one of your lights um you could i've had success doing two to a light um, but you can do more if you want I'm sure it won't hurt it the important thing is make sure that light can get through uh, I highly recommend using not only super glue but using activator to help you know shorten the time you have to hold the glue on there but once it all sets we'll go ahead and plug it in And I don't know if you can see, but yeah, you can see there, the lights on the side are working. And what's really good about this is they'll match the lights that come from, that are inside, they'll match the color of the lights here. And like I said, this is another benefit because it doesn't draw any power from your battery or power supply. So. And it's a little easier because you're not soldering anything, you're not cutting any wires, you're not doing any of that. You're just literally gluing pieces of plastic, clear plastic, onto a light bulb. And another benefit is with this, if you want the light to be a different color, like if you wanted to use this for the bridge modification, uh, just paint your tip and your light matches the color. So. Either way you go, there's really no wrong way to do um, the light, the add, the additional lighting. Just one way simpler and one way a little more complex. Uh, I already know I'm not going to be able to change out the lighting for the Ford sections, but I think going forward I am going to use this method just because when I did the lighting for the Ford section, uh, when I connected it up, it sort of one of the lights kind of dimmed a little bit so I'm worried about the loss of power so because of that I'm gonna stick with the fiber optic uh, method but a uh, link will be in the description below for where you can get these where you can get some fiber optic cable and use it on your model now we're gonna talk about light blocking So, we're, so now we're going to take a moment to talk about doing light blocking. You may remember in my last video on stage 49, there was a big section of the instructions I skipped that dealt with light blocking on the officer's quarters and grand staircase section. So why exactly would we do light blocking? Well, here's, an, here's a reason. 
you have here a piece of styrene. Very, it's a thin piece of styrene, but it will, you know, prove to be an effective demonstration for what we're doing, for what we're talking about here. So you can see right now, this piece of styrene, you really can't see through it. It's not, because it's not transparent. It's an opaque piece of styrene, so you can't see through it. But, if we were to take a light and put it behind it, well, it's not showing, okay, but now you can clearly see it, and you can clearly see the the further away it is, the brighter the light, the bigger the light gets. So, there's two options you can do to handle this. Obviously, you could, the number one, one option is to make your pieces of plastic thicker. But then that would cut into the spate, but in a model of this size, that would cut into the ability to include some of the finer details on the inner parts of the ship and it would leave it would take room away to put the lights and the windows and everything else so they decided to go the light blocking method to block the lights and what they decided to do was to use this which is a sticker sheet that will basically add the lights add block the light by reflecting it back into the ship now you can use this but there's a lot of people that I've seen complain about how difficult it is to put these things into your ship and that's just under normal circumstances without doing any of the mods we've been doing but if you but it'll be especially difficult if you're doing the light mods like I've done so, how do we do light blocking? In e what's an easier way we can do light blocking? Well, we can use paint to light block. So I'm gonna bring over this section of the ship and we're going to flip it over here and I'll show you what we've done. So you can see I'm going to start in the front section here with the officer's quarters. I've painted the officer's quarters walls uh, in a two-tone paint to help block the light. So the first paint we use is just this kind of flat matte black. To create an undertone, an underlayer. Um, that helps us to start the process of blocking light. And you could technically leave it at that point because if you get enough black on there, the light's not going to go through. But I wanted to go a little further and recreate the spirit behind this shiny sheet. So I bought and I used a Met metallic silver paint which is very reflective and did a layer over the black so the light will bounce off here so that'll take care of the officer's quarters section and that's a good thing because we don't really need to see inside these windows too much because if you th really think about it the officer's quarters on the Titanic they were more or less there for the officers to sleep and, you know, really rest in during their off time. So the lights on the insides of these wouldn't be on too often and the passengers would never actually be forward of here to see them, to see these rooms. So it really doesn't matter. You know, if we're seeing all the electrics and stuff in there. Where it does matter, though, is in the back. Now, in this section, they would have had you use the same reflective paint. But these sections are actually sections that you might see, especially in this grand staircase section. 
Um, basically, everything from here, from this point forward, is the grand stair, the first class grand staircase, and all of this is the gymnasium. Uh, the gymnasium's windows were frosted. If you've seen the movie Titanic, you know that all the windows of the gymnasium are frosted. And we all know how to frost the windows, so the process would be the same here. These windows, however, weren't. So you can and you will be able to look inside and notice the grand staircase. So... To make that work, I decided to paint the walls the same color the staircase is going to be. For that, I'm going with a raw sienna. It's not a brown, because, like, the windows are brown. The window frames are all brown. It's not very, it's not an overly dark color but it's brown enough and I think that is the right color um this is the color it looks like on Titanic Honor and Glory if you look at and I'll show you that I'll show you a picture of that right now but that look that's what it looks like on Titanic Honor and Glory so if you really look at it that way it really does seem like that's the best color to use um, now, keep in mind, on the Grand Staircase, it goes floor to ceiling, but on the Gymnasium, only, like, the base section of the windows are all this color. And, of course, I did all the pillars that color, too. So, the point of this is, when you look through these windows, you're going to see... I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera or not, but you're going to be able to see the grandeur of the grand staircase in there so this you'll be able to see and this you technically won't see and there's something we may be doing with this in a future video uh, when I get the parts from Woody's model work so that's something we're gonna have to explore at a later time though but if but now our light blocking is done effectively so if we did this right the light should not come through the plastic it should stay on the inside of the ship so that's it about the light blocking um, section here and now we're gonna take a few moments to discuss the lifeboats that we're going to use on the Titanic model and why I'm going with the KA set over the stock set. So let's talk now about the lifeboats of the Titanic. Now, there were, first of all, there are three different types of lifeboats that the Titanic had. First ones are these. These are the collapsible lifeboats. There were four of them. You may remember we've already done, we've already put two of these on the roof of the officer's quarters. Um, these ones will be in the forward section. Now, remember, one of these is the one that Ismay escaped on uh, in during the night. Next, we have two of these cutters. Now, this one I've already done all the detail work on. I'll get into more detail on that later. Um, but with the cutters, these were swung out ready to go at a moment's notice. And these were basically emergency boats. You would launch these in the event of an emergency. You could get them out onto the water quicker. Um, that's what these boats were for. The majority of Titanic's lifeboats were these uh, 30 foot uh, regular lifeboats. These are the main boats that they have. There were 14 of these on the deck. Now naturally your KA set comes with all these lifeboats. Uh, so let's talk about them. First of all, when it comes to colors, uh, there's going to be a little bit of your 
your personal preference, but the Eve, the standards, obviously, we got a flat white on the bulk of the boat. Uh, this is tough to describe how I got to this color. It's basically just a canvas color that I mixed up. Uh, the key thing to remember, though, is when you're mixing the color for the canvas, make sure you mix enough to cover all t all 18 lifeboats that have a canvas cover. I almost said 20 because technically the Titanic did have 20 boats, but again, the two cutters don't have that covering on them. Uh, so make sure you mix up enough to cover all of them because you want consistency in those canvas covers. Uh, this brown area, this dark area between the white and the canvas, um, that's really up to you. It's some kind of a brown I used a Shuttle Art Burnt Umber to get this really dark color on that. And I think that looks really good. That really stands out. And to make these, uh, you may see these rope sections. I made those different color. For that, I used a Yellow Ochre from Cali Art. Um just to pop those ropes a little bit and that's going to help for something later on. Uh, in the cutters, you have to put in... It's going to be hard to show with my limited lighting here. Let me see if I can do something with that. So with these cutters, you got to put in uh, ores. And I decided to make the ores just a little bit of a different color than the dark brown so that they would stand out a little bit. For that I just used this uh, burnt sienna color which you can see is a little it dries a little lighter than the burnt umber so it's not but it's not as huge a it's not as huge a departure. And obviously these ropes on the side here which we will get into in a little while uh, those are the burnt umber color again. Uh, using the same color throughout is going to help with consistency. So we're going to put this boat to the side for a minute. This boat, um, I just used a Sharpie to kind of highlight those ropes. Uh, just like I did on the other ones. So these ones are the pretty easy ones to do because they're just basically white, the canvas, and then you highlight those ropes. But we're going to move these off to the side. And we're going to talk about the detail work on this because you can see this boat's looking rather plain right now. Well, we have to add some markings to it. And for this particular set, I'm going to be utilizing the Petting House decal set. Now, obviously, you can tell I'm using two different sets of decals. One is the Petting House. And the other is, there's no real brand to it, um, but that one's not always going to be available. This one is pretty much readily available to you, so um, I'll show you one of the main differences, though. So here we have a set from the set that they no longer have, and right off the bat, you can see... The flags are a little small, the pieces are a little smaller. Um, there has been some complaints about the Petting House set that the part, the decals are actually not the right size for the ship. And this other set is more correct. But it doesn't hurt to have both if you can get the other set that I've used in the past with the, um, with the line, with the, uh, yellow stripe on it. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen here. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you can get that one, but it won't hurt to have two of them. And I'll explain to you why. Because one thing that I, one reason I have to use these is because I did originally put all these ones onto the boats. I was down to the last boat and I decided to go and seal these with my, um, with my sealer so that again just like on the Titanic nameplate it gets rid of that decal sheen that makes it look like you put a sticker on a piece 
Well, when I did that, I apparently did not let that these dry enough. And it caused the water that was still behind these, combined with the spray I used to seal, it actually kind of caused these to melt. And so it lost all the detail work that I was trying to do. So I had to paint over those, those decals. And now we're going to be using these ones. Um, again, the key thing is you want to get consistency in your model. You want everything to be consistent. Even if it's the wrong size, they'll all be the wrong size. So there'll be some consistency there. Uh, don't worry about all this other stuff. We'll, we'll get into that a little later on. Um, but our main focus is going to be the flags and these markings down here, which, which are markings that tell you the size of the boat and the capacity and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to want is take a nice, sharp blade. Very sharp. And we're going to want to cut out a section of flags. Alright, got our flags. We're going to take this off to the side. Now for this, you're definitely, definitely going to want your magnifiers because these are highly small but highly detailed. Now the next step we're going to do is we're going to separate these out. So I'm going to go do that off camera because I need the space to see here. So once you got them cut out like that, you're going to want to take one at a time. Well, first of all, you want to get them together because the flags on each side will be going the same direction. So pair them up so that you got your flags going the same way for each side. Then you're going to want to take these and trim them way down because they don't because they do take up a bit of room. So you're going to want to trim them down as close as you can so you have enough room to put them. So I'm going to go trim these up now. And there we go. I'm zoomed in way far so you can see this because this is very tricky to show. But you can see how much I trimmed off on this one compared to what I got on this one here. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on this one now and then we'll talk about how to actually put these on. There we go. We got those two ready to get ready to get to the next step now if you've done models before you know decals require water to get out now I'm just using an artist palette thing a bit of water in the in two of them why am I doing two um personal preference I like having I like doing one side, one whole side at a time, so I choose to do two of them. Uh, you can do one at a time if you wish. Um, that's a completely judgment call. So we're going to put these into the water, and then we're going to talk which one goes where. You really want to kind of dip them down in there and get them to the bottom of the water and let them sit there. So those are going to sit for a few minutes. So now we're going to talk how we put, like, how do these go on? For that, we're going to take a look at this screen here. Now you'll see that the important one to make sure you get is the one that says SS Titanic because on that one, the post of the flag is going to be up against the, I don't know what that's called, prow, I guess? Whatever the flat end of the lifeboat is, the, that's where the post of the flag is going to be. So that one is the important one to get right because that's going to determine the direction that is going to be the forward section of your boat. And that's important to note because we're going to need to do that later on. So whichever one says SS Titanic, Make sure that that one goes on the flat part of your lifeboat. 
Okay, so they've probably set enough by now that we can take them off the sheet. Um, you basically are going to want to slide them off. We got our lifeboat ready here. So basically, we're going to take a set of tweezers and kind of... Try to get a piece to slide off here. Ah, now we got it. So you see we got the decal. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the water off it. You don't want to take off too much, but take off a little bit. Now as I said, we're going to put the post of the flag against the edge and we're going to line SS Titanic up as close to the brown as you can while you're still staying in the white section. Let's get that in place. Should look something like that. Then we're going to do the same thing for Liverpool. just a little bit of the water off it and it's gonna be the same thing we're gonna get the Liverpool in the white but as close to the brown as you possibly can do Just like that. So Liverpool and SS Titanic are on their proper sides. Now we're going to repeat the same process with these two on the other side. So we're going to do all this again. And this is why this is a tricky part to do because there's a lot of waiting and fine detail work that you have to do on this, so I'm not going to bore you with do, going through it all again, but we're going to go do the same step on the other side, and then we'll talk about what comes next. And there we go. So now both sides have their nameplates and their flags on it. Now, I was doing a little research while I was... You know, waiting for the second set to get detached from these, from their backings. And some things I've read said that uh, the one that says SS Titanic, they would both be on the same side facing out. And the Liverpool would be on the same side facing in. Um, But the one I, the Titanic Honor and Glory thing that I've been using to help with some of the detail work has shown... One side says SS Titanic, one side says Liverpool on the same side of the ship, so on that front, it's going to be your choice, whatever looks aesthetically pleasing to you. I like doing it this way because, as I mentioned, this is going to tell us which is the front of the ship, of the lifeboat, and which is the back. So this helps us out with that a lot. But now, now that we've, if you're doing it this way, now that you've chosen which is going to the front and which is going to the back, now we have to figure out which side is going to face in towards the deck, and which side is going to face out towards the sea. And I'm going to show you just how we're going to do that. So to choose which side is going to be on our inner part of the deck and which is going to be facing out, we are going to use what's known as the load plates, which are these round plates right here. Now, there's no possible way I can zoom in to show you what numbers are on here, so we're gonna put right up here, right there, that's what information is on a load plate. So, 
the first, the top part, the top number tells you how many feet the lifeboat is. In this case, 30 feet. The cutters were 25 feet and the collapsibles didn't have any of these symbols on it, so we don't worry about those, but the cutters were 25 foot each, which if we're looking at the padding house sets, there's a bunch of the 25 foots over here, so you're covered. The middle section of numbers are also other measurements, basically how many feet wide and how many feet tall it is. So if we're looking at the lifeboat, your top number measures from bow to stern, from front to back. Your middle number is going to basic, your middle number is the first one's going to be at the widest point, how wide the boat is. And the third number on that line is going to be the depth. So if we're looking at the one that we're showing here, that means that these 30 foot lifeboats were 30 feet long nine inches wide and had a depth of four feet that bottom number is the total capacity and no it doesn't say 648 because we all know that these lifeboats could not take 600 people or they they'd have plenty to get through but what it is is there was a formula that they would use and the formula was basically you took the cubic feet, you multiplied it by an arbitrary number 0.6, and divided it by 10. Uh, that was called the Simpsons rule. And so when you do that, you get a total capacity of 64.8 persons, which since you can't have 8 tenths of a person, at least not really, uh, they bumped it up to 65 per lifeboat. So the capacity of each lifeboat was said to be 65 people. Not that that really mattered because as we tragically know, very few of the lifeboats actually took 65 pe people. So how are these going to determine what side of the ship these boats go on? Well, the these plates will go under the front of the the front flag on these so whichever side says ss titanic these are going to go underneath and obvi and these faced inward towards the deck at all times so whatever side you put these on that's the side you're going to have facing so i'm going to have this one is going to go on this side so it's going to be facing the port side so this lifeboat is going to go on the starboard side of the ship. Just like with the flags, you want to cut these as close as you possibly can. Because unlike the ones, the other set that I showed you, these ones are all a sticker. So the more overage you have, the more you're going to have later to deal with. So, Again, this is why a sharp blade and your glasses are going to be the biggest tools you need for this. So there we go, just like that. So now we've made, so now we've put all the decals that need to go on to the first of our 30 foot lifeboats on our lifeboat. So one down, 13 more to go, so um, key thing to note, let these set at least 24 hours to make sure there's no water left in them uh, before you go and seal them up with your sealant spray. The less, the more time they have to set, the better it's going to be for your sealer, so make sure you don't try to go too fast on this. So that's it for this special look at the Titanic build. I hope it's been informative and I hope you found some information in there that'll help you do your builds. Uh, tune in next time. We're going to be looking at another set of... We're going to be looking at some stuff from Woody's Model Works in greater detail that you might consider getting for your model. 
and we also got the Enterprise D build coming up, and we also got another pack for the Titanic. It's going to be quite a lot to go through, so hopefully you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you next time on the Model Frontier.